The next paragraph that we come to is this notion of it is raining. And the key thing to note there is, where's the subject? Who's the agent in this sentence? What is the it in it is raining? I'm not saying I rain. Lacan moves very quickly through this only to say, baby, it is raining primary truths. It's an interesting move. Very interesting, quick move that he's making here. The being of thought is the cause of thinking qua beyond sense. Again, think of this as absence. Now, using this structure rejects any promotion of infallibility. And here we come to the key point at the bottom of page three. Lacan's understanding of structure, of discourse, of language, of the other, of the symbolic, we can keep adding to this list. And that, of course, is going to risk muddying several concepts, but it allows us to establish a baseline for Lacan's thought. If you accept his theory of the big other, namely that the big other doesn't exist, that it's always lacking, that something's always missing from it, the same way that the trash can itself is always missing from the contents that it has within it, then you have to allow for some fallibility in our understanding of discourse, of structure, of logic. Here, this structure rejects any promotion of infallibility. And notice Bruce Fink's move on this. Whenever you see phallus, think fallible. Those words are etymologically connected. The lexical history is there. Lacan's theory of structure, of discourse, is one that rejects any notion of infallibility. Completion, harmony, union. There is no universe of discourse. It is only helped precisely from the gap. There's that third element, that disjunction, that third element that proves that for Lacan, one plus one always equals three. And now we come to these elements that couple with this fallibility. There's a halting, stopping, defective, failing aspect Something flawed is occurring at the top of page four. Notice how this disrupts the fundamental fantasy. The fundamental fantasy, as we learned in seminar 14, is, is, the, is the belief that, that wholeness can be acquired, that somebody somewhere knows all the answers, that the big other is this incredibly elaborate, coherent, cognizant, everywhere at once, NSA, you can start slipping in the, into kind of paranoid delusions here. Um, the truth, though, is that that shit doesn't exist. There is no omniscient, omnipotent, big other out there watching you. It ain't Colonel Sanders. It ain't Queen Elizabeth, even though she still lives on in Clickhole. It certainly is not the NSA. It's not aliens, as you're um, very interesting neighbor might tell you. Um, this fundamental fantasy is shattered by Lacan's theory of the structure, of discourse, of language, um, which is always flawed, defective, purporting to be totalizing, but always missing something. <clears throat> this is what structuralism takes seriously, Lacan says on page four. It takes seriously the fact of knowledge as cause, as cause in thinking, and most usually it has to be said in a delusional perspective. If philosophy is the discourse that seeks a harmony of thinking with itself, and by extension, some sort of view of the entire world, what Lacan is here going to tell us is that that is a delusional perspective. Delusional because it marks a fundamental fantasy, that you could somehow step outside and away from the world enough to get a holistic, totalizing, encompassing perspective on it. Which brings us back to where we started this little discussion. Do not be frightened. These are opening remarks. Reminders of certainties, not truths. And I would like, before introducing today the schemas from which I intend to start, 
to mark that if something here and now ought already to be in the palm of your hand, it is what I took the care to write earlier on the board about the essence of the theory. The essence of psychoanalytic theory is the function of discourse. Read dysfunction of discourse. And very precisely because of something that may now appear, may appear new to you, or at least paradoxical, that I am saying that it is without words. It is a matter of the essence of the theory because this is what is at stake. Now understanding a little bit about what he means by discourse, we can move to the question of what he means to have a discourse without words, and this being the essence of psychoanalytic theory. Now, there's a quick answer to this, and there's a longer answer to this. I'll give you the quick in order to push pause and move the discussion forward and say that I would guess that the without words, the discourse without words, would in fact be that of mathematics, or in Lacan's sense, the mathemes. The mathemes and the formulas of Lacanian psychoanalysis mark a discourse without words that is the essence of psychoanalytic theory.